good fun days like these are, are great. You get the whole industry together um, and to have, you know, companies um, and corporations like Interbet and Cape Racing who are uh, so generous with um, sort of time and, um, and energy into, into making a day like this possible, is, uh, it's, it's fantastic for everyone. Hey, I must say that the music that these guys have got going now, <laughs> it gets you into the mood. <laughs> Yo, mummy, it gets you into the mood. Race uh, number five up next, and this will be a jackpot. Two races, five, six, seven, and eight. And this is over 1,100 meters. It's the first of our two juvenile features, and this one's for the Phillies. It's the Stilicia Stakes. It's a group three. And um, there's a field at the time of recording of nine going to post. What do we have for you? Well, we have Bubbles and Beads uh, winning on debut, a replay of that run, and we chat to Stuart Ferry and Craig Udy. Bubbles and Beads are starting to move up on the outside and also Quinabi's running on from behind. Coming down to the 200, Bubbles and Beads, Enid's girl on the inside, then Tabitha Cat and Quinabi continues to warm up but Bubbles and Beads is going on strongly. Quinabi's running on from behind but Bubbles and Beads will win. Bubbles and Beads ends up winning by three and a half to four. Second, Quinabi, Enid's girl, third, Tabitha Cat, fourth, then Telio and a bound light. Yeah, Red Rose, the first time, first race she just needed, second time, you know, she came to the races and knew what she was doing, and yeah, she won, she won a very good race. Woodland Retreat, yes, she's also a nice player, doesn't show a lot here on the sand, but uh, her form is good, and uh, on the grass she's much better. Era Mystery with Craig, yes, very nice run, first run out the Maidens, um, blowing a bit at the end, so she'll improve from that run, and uh, there's a must in everything. Sabatini won very well last time. Uh, I think Anton's filly was unlucky not to win uh, the last time. She got into a lot of um, trouble at, the, at Groville. And uh, she is uh, um, Serena's first choice. She's improved from that last run. She's a big runner. Yeah, obviously she's a nice filly, you know, and she won nicely first time. Uh, but now we're going to Scotland for the first time. But she's, she's a sensible filly and I don't think that should worry her. Yeah, well, the Dennis Dreyer team uh, with these juveniles on uh, feature race days, they've tasted success at the highest level on many, many occasions. And I know that Hollywood Bet Scottsville is a happy hunting ground for feature races uh, for the Dreyer team, especially in the juvenile races. So they'll be hoping that one of their two runners here, Red Roses 2 and Bobbles and Beads, can maybe... Uh, get into the number one box. What did you make of this race? There is, uh, you know, form to work around, but very difficult to try and compare uh, the wins against uh, the wins of other runners because uh, they're young horses, and you know, as we've come to know, and everyone feels the same. They all improving at different rates, and it's hard to assess. But you have to make a choice, make a decision, or play the field. Yes, uh, these have elected to go narrowly with uh, number three, Princess Ozma, in collateral form. Now meets number one, Red Roses 2, at level weights. However, I found it difficult to separate these two runners. And in your pick six at jackpot, you have to throw in a horse like number nine, Baubles and Beads. Princess Ozma was very strongly fancied last time out of one, and I don't know if... You know, that uh, frustrating time at the start would have cost her in the running. She seemed to work herself up, uh, you know, before they got into the gates. You can see clearly in the computer form, it stated stubborn. And, uh, you know, she moved up to a point, but then Red Roses too just got the better of her. I don't think there'll be much between the two, but I'll keep an eye on this Philly Princess Ozma when, they, when they're behind the starting stalls and see how she goes. If she's quiet on the day and she doesn't work herself up, etc., I think she could certainly reverse the form at Race Roses too. I'll tell you, the, the source bubbles and beads, now that I, I watched that replay, maybe for about the, the fifth time in the last 24 <coughs> hours, I'm just starting to grow in confidence with her as well because as the race went on, she seemed to get stronger. The negative that I had, and I kept a close eye on this horse called Quinabi, and we guys were working the other day at Hollywood Bets Gravel. I wanted to see how close Kunabi could have got to Mia Loa. You know, we know that Azikai was scratched, uh, so that was mm. me out mm. uh, with regards to uh, to see how the th that runner was going to shape up. But Kunabi, uh, I'm 
you know, I was a bit disappointed. I think Konami finished uh, fourth uh, on, 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 uh, uh, yes. I, on uh, during the week, but I was a bit disappointed. But anyway, Bubbles and Beach, she just seems to have that uh, presence about her and the way the stable spoke about her first time out. There was no shortage of confidence in, in the comments department, in the betting department. And she could be a filly that's just loaded uh, with uh, natural ability. Yes, I do think that she's a big runner here. She is one of the unknown quantities of the race because she could be anything, Dees. This filly that I'm going to be tipping first, and uh, I like her. Uh, her name is Amina Glenn Cotson, Richard Faree. I'll tell you why. On debut, I worked in the parade ring. And um, I forget, I think, uh, I forget who was working in the studio, but I was just getting some comments and it was race number one. And John uh, Butler, the assistant trainer to Glenn Cotson, uh, thankfully I got hold of him. And I, I just mentioned to him, you know, there, were, there are a few horses that I fancied here. I think the betting was two or three runners that were attracting betting support. And he was short and sweet, which was passed on to the viewers as well, that he thinks that uh, his filly, if she's not too green, she'll win. She's uh, put up some really good work and they were expecting her to put in a winning performance on debut, which she did. And she won really well. So, next time out, you know, Woodstock Retreat came out to win that form's looking good. And I just got the feeling from John, you know, you, you often can sense it, what they think about a horse that's debuting, that this filly, uh, she, she, she could be good. She could be very good. Must take note of the eye-catching jockey booking as well in the form of Richard Furie. There's no doubt he's going to give it a proper ride and uh, a serious player here. Also another one that could be anything. Yeah, no, it's, it's that type of race, you know, are you going to have to roll the dice and make the decision? Are you going to include three runners in your pick six, two runners in your pick six, or are you going to play for the result and go the field? Well, I'm going to go with my, my top three selections. Uh, in order of preference, I'm going to go number two, Amina, to beat number nine, Bobbles and Beads. And then for third and fourth, I think Prince and Princess Ozma and Red Roses too. Those look to be the next two in the betting. But take note of Craig Udy's comments there. He, I think he liked Sabatini, uh, who was a fluent winner last time out. So all the best, Jeff, if you're playing a jackpot two, which will begin in race number five. <laughs> The betting, uh, the not so much uh, anymore is more down to my own fault. Uh, I need to, uh, I need to get studying again to to get the edge back. But yeah, it's a great product. I love the exchange. It's, uh, it's really, it's uh, in my opinion, one of the better bookmakers, if not the best bookmaker out there. Yeah.